Uh, we're about three or four minutes has uh, elapsed since I just said that. And uh, the onions are cooked. And I'm going to put the onions on a towel. They even started to brown a little bit. And this is not a browning type thing. Not to suggest that it would hurt them or anything. But you see, this kind of absorbs some of the grease. Spread them out a little bit. Give them a chance to cool. We'll set them over there for a minute until we get done with the mushrooms. And the mushrooms are cooked. Mushroom is probably the only veg that's, that I know of offhand, although the squashes are a lot like this too. That's about 90% water. You can start out with this much mushrooms, but if you puree them and dry the water on them, you can end up with this little golf ball sized thing of mushrooms. All right, so we'll take the sauteed mushrooms now. Just give them a quick little draining. Oh, they didn't drain too much. Now we're going to chop them. Now, every time I show somebody how to do this, they always say, can't we just chop them first before we saute them? No, you cannot. In order for them to be cooked the way you want them to be in terms of their taste and texture in the duck cell, you have to slice them, saute them, drain them, then chop them, then wring them out in order for the hat that texture that you're looking for. Okay? So we're going to quick chop these mushrooms. I listed the duck cell under skills, even though it is a specific food preparation per se, only because um, I see this more as like a cooking condiment, if you will, you know? Not like mustard or ketchup, but, you know, in that, in, in that realm. You put it with things and on things and over things and around things and as part of things. You don't serve it by itself. Depending on the use, might determine how finely you're going to chop it. I think for my use today, which is going to be for the stuffed cabbage rolls and the vegetable DVD, um, this is chopped enough. Now, I'm going to take the mushroom and do a little bit like I do with chopped parsley after I wash it. I'm going to put it in a towel and we're going to wring it out. And you can see just how much water comes out of it. Look at that. Now this mushroom water, by the way, is really good, but we don't want it in our duck cell. If you happen to have a stock or a sauce or a soup or something like that floating around, just wring it out right over that. Look at the amount of water that came out of those mushrooms. And let's take a peek inside the towel. Look at that. Now we're going to put the mushroom and the onion together. We're going to season it. I shouldn't say season it. We're going to put a little bit of tomato paste in it, a very small amount, which is one the thing that's going to make the duck cell kind of stick together, if you will, so it's not like loose chopped onion mushroom. The tomato paste kind of makes it one thing, if you will, okay? We're going to take the onion that's been drained.
I like my duct cell nice and dry, which is where this is going right here. Now, I'm going to put a very small amount of tomato paste. Remember, I want you to think of the tomato paste being added to your duct cell a little bit like salt and pepper. Put the tomato paste in in increments until you get the amount in that you want. Don't throw in what you think because this stuff is very deceiving and the duct cell doesn't need that much tomato paste, okay? So I'm going to start out with that much for all of this. It's going to get just a little bit messy. Let me see if I can... Yeah, I could use a rubber scraper for this. If I was making a fair amount of this stuff, you know, I was cooking for somebody besides myself, I'd probably have some rubber gloves on and I'd get in here. I love to toss salads with rubber gloves. There's nothing worse than tongs when you're trying to toss something sometimes. Okay, I, th I think I have the right amount of tomato paste in here. Right there. I could put a little bit more, but I'm not going to. But before I do all that and make decisions that I'm done, first we're going to taste this, then we're going to check it for salt and pepper, and I'm going to put it away for whatever use you're going to be making it for. You can, you can freeze the duct cell. Make sure it's in a fully airtight container so it doesn't absorb any moisture. Nothing worse than going through all the trouble of making this dry and then putting it somewhere where it's going to get a little bit of condensation before you use it. So let's just have a taste of this duck cell the way it is. It definitely needs a little bit of salt and pepper. That means that I didn't put too much in to begin with. If I did, that would be a problem, that, thermal, that little lecture I gave you about not doing that. All right, let's mix that up and see where we're at with that. This stuff is delicious all by itself. It really is. You can put this on top of garlic bread would melt some mozzarella cheese on top of it, and it'll be delicious. I've never done that, but I'm certainly sure, sure you could. Again, this is a necessary condiment that you want to have in your repertoire. And um, it's a little bit like tomato concasse, although it's a slightly prepared food that you might use to do things like you do with tomato concasse. Um, I still call it a condiment, you know? All right, let's give that a taste. It's good to go right now. And one more thing to mention about this here. This is an item that can be used hot or cold in the final service and being ready to, uh, and preparing something to finish it that they're eating. Um, usually it's served hot, but it can be included as part of a cold thing in something, okay? And it still tastes great. So there you have it. Mushroom and onion duck cell, also known as mushroom and onion hash, which is what this is. And it's worth mentioning that <coughs> there are a number of French cooks who have been brought up through the ranks of cooking, learning to make this with shallots and mushrooms, or shallot, mushroom, and onion. Um, and that's all okay, too, as long as it's done well. Uh, but regular uh, dry Spanish onions would be the model that you should use to make this. There you go. Enjoy your duck cell. Keep it in your repertoire forever.